Hello everyone, welcome to Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you've followed my videos over the past one to two years, you've noticed that I'm constantly switching between different types of riding gear. And the reason for this is I'm trying to test as much gear as possible to bring you the best information and the best reviews on all sorts of various riding gear. Over the past one to two years, I've tested somewhere between 10 to $20,000 worth of different riding gear from helmets to base layers to jackets, pants, boots, gloves, and everything in between. So what I've done for you today in this video is I'm compiling everything into one gear guide for 2024. So this is effectively the gear that I recommend to family and friends and I've decided to share it all with you here uh, in this video today. Now, quite a few things that I've used didn't really make the cut and that's okay. But if there's something that you're not seeing in the video, it's not because it's not good gear. It just could be that either I didn't have it for test, I didn't have time to test it, or maybe I did test it and it just didn't make my list. Now, I've broken down the buyer's guide into a couple different tiers. So if something gets the gold level or the gold award, that means that regardless of price, I think that's the best option in that category. And sometimes there's two or three choices there on the gold level. Then I have the silver awards. The silver stuff is going to be maybe uh, the best value stuff that's still really good, something I still recommend, but at a much lower price point. Now, you can download the guide below. I'll have it downloadable as a PDF, at least maybe even more versions than that. I'm also gonna link all of the gear uh, down below uh, with the gold and silver awards in the pinned description, or I'm sorry, the pinned comment and the video description. But the easiest might be to download the gear guide as a PDF, and it's just something you can reference throughout the year. And I'll try to update this guide at least once a year, so I'll probably do another version at the beginning of 2025. Now, I've done a ton of work to obviously put this together and test all this gear, and that's fine, that's what I do, it's my job, but there's only one favor I ask. Please use the links in the guide or in the description or the comment below when you're buying any of this gear or any other gear. The reason is that one of the ways that this channel, this independent motorcycle journalism content is financially sustainable is by people like you using those affiliate links to, when you go shopping. It doesn't cost you anything extra. I earn a small commission, which I reinvest, back into independent reviews and content here on the channel. So please do that, and I really, really appreciate it. All right, first category, it might seem a little bit boring, but is very important, is to choose appropriate base layers and also use neck protection or neck gaiters. Uh, so for cold weather, now there are different optimal base layers uh, for cold weather versus hot weather, depending on the properties that they have. So for cold weather, my gold award for base layer is gonna be the Moscow Moto Strata Merino. These are merino wool blend, they're stretchy, they're comfortable, uh, moisture management, they don't smell. Uh, they're incredibly versatile. Uh, they're not the cheapest thing, but for my testing for cold weather base, they're the best. So that gets the gold award. Um, and then for neck protection, I like an Alpenstars balaclava and I give that a gold award. Uh, for the silver here, I'm gonna give the Climb Aggressor uh, plus 1.0. So if you see the aggressors, you're gonna see this again. They have the plus and the minuses. The plus are warmer and the minus are cooler. Uh, I should say, let me rephrase that. The plus are for cold weather, they make you warmer, and the minus ones are for hot weather, they make you cooler, if that makes sense. Now, for hot weather base layer, the absolute best that I've tested uh, at any price point is gonna be the Climb Aggressor minus 1.0. There's some magical property that that fabric has. It's my absolute best performing base layer in warm to hot weather. So, a little bit pricey, but I highly recommend you pick it up and that gets the gold award. Uh, <clears throat> Now for all weather base layers, something a little bit more versatile if you don't wanna buy different sets, uh, the MSR base layers, I give a gold award. They perform very, very well in varying temperatures. They're not quite as good in hot weather as maybe the Aggressor minus one. They're not as good in cold weather as like the uh, Moscow Monostrata, but they're pretty good in everything and they come at a very, very good price. Uh, the Climb Aggressor, uh, they all make that in a version as well. I give it a gold award. That is neither plus nor minus, just the regular Aggressor. They're also a very versatile base layer. Uh, and also a balaclava uh, for the Axial. The Axial is uh, Revzilla's one of their house brands and I really, really like that one. Okay, what about motorcycle socks? If you wear tall boots, which I highly recommend you do and we'll cover boots here in a minute, um, there's a couple socks that I really like and I've tested a lot. The Climb Ventilated Socks, they're, they're a thin material, they're super cool. Um, 
they just, I have hot feet and these really help with that. Now, they don't seem to have that anti-smell property. They do definitely get smelly after a day, so there is that. Uh, the other sock I really like, uh, especially for colder weather or that you can wear it in warmer weather, is the MSR Adventure Sock. These have some magical fabric that's like part merino wool. It's very comfortable and you can wear them all day and they still don't smell uh, for the next day. So if you're multi-day camping, backcountry riding, good for that. Right, mid layers are very important. Mid layer is gonna be that uh, garment that you put between your base layer and your outer jacket or outer shell. Uh, now there's a few things here. So the gold awards I'm gonna give to the Moscow Moto Ectotherm. It is a heated mid layer. It is a puffy jacket that has heating elements in it. You plug it into the bike and I have a dedicated review video on this, uh, which you should check out. It's one of my absolute favorite pieces of gear because when you're riding in cold weather, adding that heat electronically back in, or electrically I should say back in, is a huge benefit. But you can also just use it unheated as a puffy uh, base layer, or mid layer I should say, plus around camp or uh, in the evening after the ride. Uh, the other gold award I give here is a piece of gear called the Climb Zephyr Wind Shirt. So seems expensive for what it is, which is effectively sort of a stretchy, very thin windbreaker. But the reason I like the Zephyr is because I often ride in mesh gear and it gives me a windbreaking layer underneath the mesh for cool mornings or cool evenings um, for those three season types of rides. So I really, really like the Zephyr. I highly recommend that piece of gear. Uh, other mid layers that are really good, the Climb Inferno, I give a silver award, and the MSR mid layer, I give a silver award. Honestly, if you just want a basic uh, soft shell mid layer, if you don't already have something like that in your, in your closet for other sports you might do, the MSR is pretty darn good and it's almost the same as the Climb Inferno, so you can save yourself some money there. All right, let's move on to what I call all season, all terrain solutions for suits, for a jacket and pants. These would be the jacket and pants that I'd recommend if you want the maximum versatility and maximum protection for adventure, dual sport, and even street riding. So stuff you can stretch into the winter and stretch into the summer and make it work all year uh, with an emphasis on that hot weather ventilation property when you remove some of the layers. So maybe not a surprise to some of you, my gold award here uh, for like adventure riding where a good portion of that's on the street is gonna be the Climb Baja S4. I've tested so many high-end mesh jackets and mesh suits and different things. I always come back to the Baja as the best. The reason is great abrasion protection, great impact protection, comfortable, fits well. Uh, the ventilation is far and away better than the competition. So the ventilation panels just vent in all the right places and it's super cool wearing uh, even in the middle of summer and even riding off-road. So that is a huge achievement. If you want to extend that suit into wet weather and cooler weather, I would highly recommend the Enduro S4 uh, jacket and pant. Those are designed specifically to go with a Baja. They're stretchy as opposed to some rain garments that are just really tight and constrictive and, and like sweaty. These, not only do they have vents that you can open, but they're stretch. That's the magic of those things. I know they're pricey, I get it. Are they worth it? Yes. Uh, with that setup, the Baja and the Enduro setup, uh, and then appropriate mid and base layers, you could literally, that could be your only riding gear, in my opinion, uh, for all seasons. I mean, unless you live somewhere where it's incredibly cold in the winter. But here in a California climate, this setup works for me. Uh, the other stuff on the adventure level where you're doing more street, the, the silver awards, I've got four here. The Alpenstars Halo, which I reviewed. The Alpenstars Bogota Pro, uh, which I actually like a little bit more than the Halo. That's an excellent jacket and pant. Uh, the Revit Off-Track 2 and the Revit Sand 4 H2O, which I'm guessing I think is gonna be replaced soon, probably if, I, if I'm right, just guessing this, but by the Sand 5, so if that's out, get that, uh, or get a good deal on the Sand 4, but I really like the Sand as a all-season um, setup. Now, what if you're more of a off-road rider where more 50% or more your riding is off-road? I've got videos on separate armor versus integrated armor and all that, but if you're more of that dual sporter or off-road rider, here's the a, here's a stuff I recommend. Uh, the Moscow Moto Basilisk uh, is a waterproof uh, jacket and pant that is designed to go over armor and over things like uh, mid-layer. So excellent stuff, great membrane, great design, good vents, really, really nice stuff.
Another option I really like there that's a lot lighter duty than the Basilisk is the Rack. I don't know that they still make the pant, but I think they still have the jacket. I really love this gear. I have both the jacket and the pant. Uh, really, really nice stuff you can throw on over a jersey and you've got a nice uh, waterproof, windproof layer for dual sport or uh, off-road oriented adventure riding. Uh, for the pants, uh, pants and jerseys, I like the workhorse jersey, uh, which will go underneath some of these outer shells, and you can take off the outer shells when it's hot or you're riding off-road. Workhorse jersey has a lot of abrasion built in. Uh, and the woodsman pant, you know, I've talked about the review on that in the Moscow Moto uh, video. The woodsman pant is super stretchy, super comfortable, super versatile, but it's not waterproof, so you will need a layer to go over that. Now, if you want a more road-oriented uh, option for this four-season kind of functionality, I like the Climb Marrakesh. I've done a review on this. Stretchy, comfortable, breathable, simple design, the most comfortable gear I have, and I reach for it all the time, uh, the jacket and the pant. And then over that, you can really choose any rain uh, layer you want over that. There's a lot of good options, but I like to climb forecast uh, over jacket and pant for the rain. My silver award here is going to be the Sedisi Marco II. Um, I almost want to give it gold because it works so well. For the, the price point is dramatically less than like the Climb Baja or any of these other things here. And it works, I mean, real, functionally it's quite similar. It's a mesh uh, adventure kind of style gear, but it's good for street two. And then you can layer under and over that for different weather. The Marco II is a great set at a great price. And then you could combine it with something like the Revit Cyclone uh, rain jacket and pants. All right, let's move on to cold weather waterproof jacket and pants. If you don't really need the warmer weather functionality or you have separate mesh gear for that, what do you want for cold weather? So a gold award I give to the MSR Explorer, specifically the Gen 2 or the second generation, which has on, been on sale since about January. The first generation had a couple comfort issues, which I addressed in my review. I recently did a revised review on the Gen 2 stuff. Way, way better. Highly recommend that now. Honestly, I have gear that's nicer, in quotes, than that, but that's still probably maybe my favorite set of waterproof kind of heavy-duty adventure gears that Explorer Gen 2. Uh, the Climb Badlands A3, I have a dedicated uh, review to that. The Badlands A3 Pro is just... It's just, you know, absolutely a fortress. It is so much protection in every way. The waterproofing is amazing. The venting is amazing. It's also incredibly expensive. So keep that in mind. But I do give that a gold award for performance. Uh, silver awards, uh, the Climb Carlsbad is a great uh, Gore-Tex riding suit. Really love that suit. Uh, the Revit Echelon, which I reviewed, and the MSR Voyager for more of a dual sport, lighter duty option, more affordable option. The MSR Voyager gear is really, really good, and I still use that gear. I still like it. All right, what about gloves for cold and cold or waterproof, cold slash waterproof? So the Klein Badlands GTX Long, one of my favorite gloves that I got in the past year. I give that a gold award. Uh, the MSR heated gloves, I think I mentioned these in a video a few months ago, but they're battery operated heated gloves you can recharge. Uh, so you don't have to worry about having heated grips. You can use them on any bike or ATV or snowmobile or whatever, and they keep your hands warm. And unlike heated grips, the back of your hands are now warm instead of just the, the inside of your hand. So highly recommend those. Uh, Revit Sand 4 H2O, those are a great glove. The Climb uh, Adventure uh, GTX, they're a non-insulated glove. So if you're dealing with water and wetness, uh, but not freezing cold and you like to run heated grips, I really like the Climb GTX gloves for that. Uh, and then the MSR, MSR from Rocky Mountain, they make a winter glove that I really, really like. So I'll have that here. And those are silver awards too. All right, moving on to hot weather jacket and pants. So what if you want dedicated hot weather gear or you just live in a climate where you can stretch that to all year with various layers? So uh, gold awards, Climb Marrakesh, we've talked about that already. Climb Baja S4, that's a gold award, we've talked about that. What are silver awards for me? The Climb Induction and the Induction Pro, excellent stuff, love it. Uh, the Revit Tornado, I think they have a new version out now. Uh, the Revit Eclipse is a very affordable option. And the Sedisi Marco II, the Marco II mesh, talked about that before. Really, really awesome mesh suit uh, for a, at a great price point. All right, what about hot weather gloves? Gold Award, Climb Baja. I know, I've used, you know, you've seen those on my channel. I've been using them for years. They're still my favorite. Uh, sizing runs a little bit big, just beware on that. 
Uh, Revit Dirt 3 and Dirt 4 gloves, also right up there for me with the Bajas. Uh, the Dirt gloves, series of gloves, they're, they've got some hard protection on them, but they're very uh, meshy and ventilated. They're just super comfortable and they fit me really well and the touchscreen thing works really good. Love the Dirt series of gloves. The Sidisi Marso, Marco gloves are good, maybe not quite as long lasting as, as the more expensive ones, but uh, really nice hot weather glove. The MSR Adventure uh, Air glove, uh, Revit Off-Track 2, MSR NXT glove for like more of a motocross kind of off-road option, and the Alpenstars Halo glove. Those are all silver awards. All right, what about jerseys? If you're an off-road rider and you need some jerseys, uh, or you like to wear a jersey under your jacket, as I often do for adventure rides, the Moscow Moto Mesh XT jersey is one of my favorite hot weather jerseys. That's my gold award. The Moscow Moto Workhorse, I give that a silver. Uh, well, it probably should be gold, but anyway. The workhorse is that additional abrasion resistance um, versus a more lightweight jersey. One of my favorite pieces of gear. And then uh, from Rocky Mountain, the MSR NXT jersey or similar jersey is a great option at a lower price point. Now, moving on to a dual sport uh, jacket and pants category. So this would be like for the rider who is um, off-road quite a bit, and you don't necessarily want the bulkier, more hot uh, street options, but you want something a little more off-road oriented. So, Moscow Motor Surveyor jacket and pant. Excellent uh, shell, excellent jacket and pant for off-road and enduro riding. Uh, really, really nice stuff. The Moscow Motor Kyger. The Kyger's gonna be the hot weather pant, the hot weather brother to like the woodsman or the surveyor. Uh, the Kyger's just one giant vent, and it's a great pant. It does come at the, at the premium price, like all the Moscow gear, but it's a premium level of performance. Highly recommend it. Um, all of these are separate armor, by the way. They don't have armor pockets on the Moscow stuff. Uh, and the Moscow Moto Woodsman. The Woodsman can be used almost in any climate. It's very versatile. The venting works really well. Some of my favorite pants. Uh, Silver Awards for me is gonna be the Climb Dakar jacket and pant. I really like that setup, and they come in some really cool colors. Uh, also, the Climb Mojave pant is a full mesh, full ventilated for hot weather. And then for more of a motocross option, MSR Rocky Mountain makes some good stuff like the NXT. All right, moving on to body armor. So if you're a separate armor person, and I'm a huge fan of that setup for off-road oriented riding, when you're off-road more than half the time, uh, the Revit Proteus armored uh, upper body, uh, body armor, really, really good. You've seen it in some of my videos, really burly protection, comfortable, breathable, highly recommend that one. Um, also, I've used for many years the Lea, uh, 3DF Airfit. That's all kind of similar to the Revit option there. So those are both gold awards. I'll give a silver award to the Moose XC1. It's really, it's like half the price, I think, of some of those other ones. And it works almost as well. It's just not quite the level of protection. So that's really good for the money. I think it's like under $100. And then for knee guards, uh, I don't do the knee brace thing uh, right now, but maybe in the future. So for knee guards, I like the Revit Scram knee guards, very heavy duty, and the Liat Dual Axis if you want the hard shell uh, style. What about eyewear? So I'm gonna try some of those fly and eyes glasses soon that are supposed to be really cool, but they're very expensive. So here's some uh, more affordable options that I have tested and like and approve of. Uh, Scott Fury LS Photochromic Goggle. I can't tell you how much I love these goggles because they, they change, the, the lens darkens when it's sunny and it clears up when it's getting dark. So if you're riding in a shady forest or it starts to get late in the day or it's real cloudy, the lens will automatically lighten meaning that you're not carrying two pairs of goggles with you. Uh, that's such a game changer. I love that. I love those things. Uh, the Bobster Shield 2 glasses, they, they have like a foam kind of enclosure to keep, help keep the wind and dust out of your eyes, and the foamer's glasses. So those are both from Revzilla options. Uh, really, really like those glasses. And they come, like if you want like amber or yellow or dark smoke, light smoke, clear, they have all those options. Get the amber or yellow ones for like... Um, riding in cloudy uh, conditions or darker conditions, and then, you know, for really bright sun, it's still nice to have the smoke lenses. Okay, moving on to helmets. Uh, keeping in mind that this is really just gonna be adventure and dual sport style helmets. Uh, the Arai XD4 is a gold award for me. Uh, it's being replaced right as we speak by the XD5, which I'll have for review any day now, and we can start to make that transition, but I still recommend the XD4, and maybe there'll be some deals on it. Why do I like it so much? It's super comfortable. That's the main thing. It's a, a phenom It's the most comfortable dual sport helmet I've ever used, even more so than the Shoei. I can't wear the Shoei Hornet. I love the helmet, it's great, but this, this, the shape of Shoei just, 
I can't wear it. It just crushes my head. So I'm in a Rye head and I like the XD4 and XD5, but keep in mind the Showy is really a very similar product at the same level. It's just different head shape and of course different company. Uh, the Climb Cryos Pro. You know, it works for me, it works for my head shape. I'm kind of between the medium and large on the sizing, whereas in the Arai, I'm definitely in the medium. Uh, but man, the Cryos Pro is so good. I keep going back to it because it's super lightweight. It's 25% lighter than the competitive helmets like the Arai or the Showy. That's a phenomenal difference. Very good ventilation. I find it to be very quiet and it comes with the photochromic lens uh, for the face shield, which is super handy. Uh, then silver awards. MSR Expedition is a silver award. HJC DSX-1 is a silver award, and the Sidisi Duale, I have that one too, and I'll give that a silver award for a dual sport helmet. What about a dirt helmet? So I like the MSR MAV4 MIPS. I like helmets with the MIPS or multi-impact uh, protection system. Uh, so that's a great one, that's gold award for me. And then the Alpen Stars makes a wonderful dirt helmet, the Supertech M5. And of course, like I said at the beginning of the video, there's tons of other great helmets. I'm just kind of only telling you the ones that I've tested and I just don't have time to test hundreds of different helmets. And there's hundreds of different helmets out there and you've probably seen that. Okay, moving on to boots. So for an off-road boot, so I'm gonna have a separate video on boots, a boot buyer's guide because you kinda gotta know what kind you need. Uh, but for off-road oriented boot with maximum protection, uh, my absolute favorites, uh, and I've used a lot, are the Alpenstars Tech 7 Dry Star Enduro. They're waterproof, so it's good for touring or adventure riding or wet weather. The Enduro setup is really good with the sole. Um, these are a great heavy duty adventure boot that actually give you protection unlike most adventure boots with which really don't. Tech sevens are for the win. Those things are phenomenal. Uh, also, another one of my favorites is the Alpenstars Toucan. I started using these in the past few months. They're kind of halfway between an adventure boot and a, and a full on uh, Enduro boot. Really nice crossover, like a lot of protection but much more walkable and comfortable than a Tech seven or a Tech 10 or uh, CD Crossfire, something like that. So two cans, don't overlook those. Um, and then the silver for me is the CD Crossfire SRS, which is more of a full-on motocross style boot. Uh, a lot of people use them. I've used them for the past 15 or 20 years. They're really good, but if I had to choose between that and the Alpen Stars, I'm gonna go Alpen Stars every day. Uh, what about light adventure or more road-oriented boots? So I like the CD Adventure 2 GT, uh, Gore-Tex GTX. The Forma Adventure boots, keep in mind the Forma Adventure boots are a light duty, more of a street boot. They really don't ha have much off-road protection despite the name. The Alpenstars RT8, which are a Gore-Tex uh, street touring boot, no, for not, not for off-road use. And then the MSR Adventure boots I think are really nice, but, but again, they're that soft boot that's really not gonna hold up to any sort of having any crush protection or anything for off-road use. All right, hydration packs. I always recommend you ride with hydration pack. Dehydration is a big problem on a motorcycle, uh, no matter what the temperatures are, but of course made worse in the hot weather. Uh, my gold award for hydration packs, and I've tested um, probably diff 10 different packs, um, is going to be the Moscow Moto Wildcat. I know it's a little pricey, it's worth it. Just Trust me on this one. It's The harness is incredibly comfortable. The storage is incredibly uh, functional. They come in different sizes, really cool colors. Uh, I really like the insulated uh, hose on, on, the, on, the, on the reservoir. It doesn't get hot. Um, man, I, the Wildcats are a phenomenal product. Um, so pick your size and you, know, you just can't go wrong with it. I also really like the Climb Arsenal. That's a nice pack. Uh, and then for more budget options for hydration, MSR makes a couple I like, the Enduro, which is a little bit larger. And then they make a low profile kind of a race setup. So if you really just want water on your back and nothing else in there, no tools or anything, uh, that low profile one's really, really good. All right, well, I feel like I've probably missed a lot of stuff and I know this was kind of rapid fire, but I want this to just be like, okay, here's me, somebody who tests bikes and tests gear telling you like what are my top tier products uh, that I can recommend for you in 2024. I can't test everything. I haven't tested everything. I fully agree and understand that there's stuff out there that's probably better or just as good that I haven't talked about, but I'm just one person. I can only test so much stuff, so please forgive me in that regard. Um, but I, I really will pledge you this. If you use any of the stuff on this list, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Uh, except maybe for fit issues, which every, which you know is understandable, but use your exchanges, you know, use your sizing guides and things like that. But everything on here I've tested and I can personally endorse, and it's stuff I use myself uh, every week. Please use my links when purchasing any of this stuff. I uh, really appreciate it. In 2024, I will be starting to test uh, airbags, the new off-road stuff, uh, some on-road stuff, some different options. I'll be testing 
different jackets, helmets, pants, boots, gloves, and that's what I try to do here. So I'm trying to rotate in new stuff uh, as I get it. If you have any specific questions or comments, put that down below and I'll try to get back to you. Please use my links when you're shopping for this stuff. It's a great way to support uh, what I'm trying to do here. And I really, really appreciate it. I hope this was useful. Please ride safe and I'll see you out there.